humankind has been genetically modifying plants since uh, more than 10,000 years ago. It, this has been done using uh, primitive ways of genetic modification, and, and Mexico has contributed in an enormous way to agriculture by creating corn and tomatoes and beans, the, the, the modern varieties that we use in agriculture. But the advent of agriculture meant far more than the development of new types of food. When man uh, changed from being a hunter-gatherer to adopting agriculture, that meant that they could stay in one place and that uh, created opportunities for a very new kind of social structure and civilization. And so it has been throughout the ages. There's a very uh, strong thesis that indeed agriculture has been one of the major platforms to allow civilization to, uh, to develop. The transition from hunter-gathering to farming involved a whole lot of other stuff. It involved the development of a primitive science and technology, often expressing itself as religion. It involved the development of a complex social organization. It involved the development of architecture. In essence, the development of agriculture was the development of civilization itself. As civilization progressed in the ancient Near East and Europe, so did the technology that was used for farming. From around 4000 BC, the ox-drawn plow cut through European soil, and the invention of the wheel and the water wheel represented big leaps forward in agriculture. In the Americas, the primitive character of farming tools and the absence of farm livestock held back the development of agriculture at least until the 15th century when the Europeans arrived. Primitive agriculture led to the domestication of many different varieties of animals and plants. In the most civilized parts of the world, other innovations in farming followed, like the development of complex irrigation systems. But by today's standards, the application of science was very rudimentary. However, events occurring in medieval Europe were about to change all of this. As commerce increased in the later Middle Ages, towns began to expand around the fortifications of medieval Europe. More and more people were leaving the land and turning to trade, but they still needed to eat. And so, in order to produce more food, Europe began to turn away from subsistence peasant farming and towards large-scale farming. And with that change came an increasingly scientific understanding of how plants work. To find out more, I've come to Dover Castle in England to meet food and agriculture professor Ted Collins. Ted, what was happening during this period to towns and cities? Towns were expanding rapidly during this time, and this meant a large non-agricultural population that had to be fed. And this couldn't have been done with the peasant farming of the time? There was one fundamental difference between peasant farming and, uh, and uh, capitalist farming. Peasant farming, the principal aim and objective was to employ and to sustain a family. Um, with the capitalist farm, it was different. The objective there was to produce surpluses to feed growing cities like Paris and London. So there were large increases in the yield of the crops that were produced? Yes, indeed, there were. In the centuries that followed, there was steady progress in agricultural techniques. Farmers embraced crop rotation, and they developed new machines for planting seeds and threshing and better ways to plow the land. And these technologies brought much needed improvements in agricultural productivity. Exciting things were happening in Europe. How were these changes translated into the Americas? Well, the discovery of the new world, if we can call it that, was obviously going to be a major watershed here. Uh, but it's a two-way traffic. The settlers who followed Columbus brought with them lots of European crops 
and domesticated livestock and European farming ideas. And coming back the other way, we would have American crops. And the two most important crops were maize and potatoes. And they played a major, major role in feeding the, the growing millions of Europe, especially in the 18th and early 19th centuries. But the historical significance of this innovation went far beyond improving agricultural productivity. From the 16th and 17th centuries onwards, people were developing a properly scientific understanding of the world around them. The Age of Enlightenment had arrived. The Enlightenment was a crucial phase in human development. For the first time, people began to positively embrace science. Even people who weren't scientists began to uh, sort of try new things around their land or, or in, on, in a particular business with the belief that if they somehow discovered some new way of doing things, their life would improve for the better. People began to ask questions about the natural world and about how things grew. People wanted to try to find out, and on the basis of their results, to try and develop sort of improved practices. And the whole aim of this was communication, was experiment, was dissemination of ideas, and in fact just looking at things differently than ever before. Human beings were no longer regarded as, as passive subjects uh, who could no longer change circumstances who were fatalistically at the mercy of natural forces. On the contrary, human beings now were regarded as authors of their own destiny. It was now expected that the future would be very different than the past because people had the capacity to change their circumstances, transform the way they lived, transform the way they produced, transform their economies, change their culture. And because of that, people uh, began to have a more optimistic view of both change and also of the future. By the 19th century, important advances were being made in agricultural science, such as the discovery that plants need nutrients and the discovery of genetics by the monk Gregor Mendel. But at the same time, thanks to advances in hygiene and medical science, population levels were rapidly increasing, so much so that by the beginning of the 20th century, a leap forward in agricultural techniques was badly needed. In the past 10,000 years since agriculture began, progress has been impressive, but incredibly slow. By the 19th century, despite major scientific advances, farmers still faced huge natural barriers to producing a bountiful and healthy crop. By the early 20th century, breeders had already created the first hybrid livestock, and scientists had learned how to choose and cross strains of wheat and other crops in order to make new improved varieties. Advances in our understanding of genetics was allowing breeders to create hybrid plants which were much more vigorous and higher yielding. Along with increased mechanization and particularly the introduction of the tractor, food production was on the increase. But farmers still faced huge problems. I've come to Iowa, the land of plenty in the corn-rich Midwest, to meet farmer Max Smith. Max's family has been farming this land for generations. So who better to tell me about the three biggest problems confronting farmers in the past? Weeds, insects, and a chronic shortage of fertilizer. So what do the weeds do, basically? Well, they, uh, there's only so much moisture in the ground, and, and the corn and the soybeans, or any other crop we grow, would compete for that moisture. And we don't have enough rainfall to grow a good crop. So Max, what did farmers do in the 19th century? 